Hi, I'm Annie Lapointe, and the ornithologist at Chusin Justine. I'll be presenting you how to do the view for uh, the cardiac ultrasound. The first thing I do, I wash my hands. So the next step, you need to be at the bedside and you need to install everything that uh, you will be using during the echo. The iPad needs to be close to you in a um, view that you can use one hand to press uh, the buttons and you have to be uh, on the side and you can scan with your left or your right hand for mine I would prefer to, to scan with my right hand and be able with my left hand to press on the iPad so my convention you can choose also where you're gonna be putting the side of your probe so for typical cardiac ultrasound, usually your probe, B, will be on this side of the screen, which is the right side of the screen. This tells you that this pin here, which is the orientation of the probe, will be towards the left side of the patient. So on the baby, this is the left arm of the patient and the pin of your probe will be towards this arm. Now that we are installed, we can start the ultrasound. The first view will be the apical view. You have to go on the left side of the baby and you uh, need to get the heart from the apex. So this is the apical view, the position that you need to have. The second view that we will do is the short axis view. You need to move your probe more on the middle and you will obtain uh, the heart from the superior view and you can have both ventricle contracting and we will see later that you can move from the top to the apex. The third view is the PDA view. You need to go upper on the thorax and you will see the PDA with the aorta. As you can see the pin still on the upper side of the probe. For, for the last view, you need to turn your probe and bring the pin on the left, on the right. on the right side of the baby. And you need to move your probe lower and you will have a long axis of the heart with the left ventricle at the bottom and the right ventricle at the upper uh, part. Now we will do the subcostal view. You need to bring the probe on the belly, probably at the junction of the diaphragm and the belly, in the abdomen, and the pin is on the left side of the baby. When you move your probe, probably more um, from, uh, from the top to the back, you will catch both atrials and you will be able to assess the PFO. So we are at the bedside of one of our patients here in the NICU uh, with parents who have graciously accepted uh, generously to be part of the experience for a little baby. Um, I have here my setup with my iPad who's secured and I have my uh, probe and I have already cleaned my hands, cleaned the probe and now I will be putting some ultrasound conducting gel in order to acquire some images. So we will be starting the ultrasound in order to acquire uh, as much as possible good images. I try to obtain uh, light in the room that is as dark as possible so that I'm able to uh, appreciate well the resolution and the contrast on the screen. Um, I will be using specifically for the cardiac ultrasound a preset of pediatric abdomen actually uh, to see if my images are good and if it, it's not good enough, I might switch to cardiac and then choose whichever preset uh, is giving me the best resolution. So I will go in preset and I will be starting by choosing pediatric abdomen. 
And then based on the images that I obtain, I will decide if I go on with uh, cardiac. So I have put some of my ultrasound gel. Uh, locally, we use uh, one pack per baby and then we throw the pack once we're done. Um, and I will be starting with uh, my apical four chamber view with the probe towards uh, the left side of the baby. Here's the apex. Here we are showing where the scanning is being done at the apical view. Uh, while I am controlling the screen in order to capture some M modes for the tricuspid annular plane systolic excursion, as well as on the butterfly, you could use the MO to also capture the movement of the mitral valve uh, on the longitudinal fashion using M mode, which uh, in some centers they call the MAPC or the mitral annular plane systolic excursion, uh, while being cognizant that the left ventricle is uh, a pump that preferentially will contract circumferentially rather than longitudinally. These are the images obtained uh, with the pediatric abdominal presets of the butterfly at the apex. We can see here the apical four chamber view with the LV, RV, LA, and RA. And as we're doing a clockwise rotation of the apex, we can obtain the LV alpha track and the apical four five chamber view. The ventricle that is closest to our B cursor is the left ventricle. And here we're showing how to put an M mode, uh, which is a line of interrogation that's cutting through the mitral valve um, in order to eventually measure the MAPC. We can use um, the same principle to orientate our line of M mode interrogation to measure the TAPC, which is the tricuspid annular plane systolic excursion which is um, basically the movement of the tricuspid valve as it is plunging in systole uh, into the right ventricle. So here we are showing an example of the TAPSI uh, using the M mode, which is a marker of systolic function of the right ventricle. Um, and basically your line of interrogation has to pass through the apex of the RV to the um, tricuspid valve attachment to the free wall. Uh, as you can see, we do pauses and we took captures in order to uh, record uh, some of these measurements that we're going to be able to extract eventually from the cloud uh, using a DICOM uh, reader. Um, you can also uh, use basically the um, uh, app in order to measure live some of these measurements. You can also use the vascular carotid or vascular access preset in order to um, obtain some of the velocities of blood flow, either intraventricular or in the outflow tracks. So here is an example of obtaining some of the velocities, for example, for the mitral inflow, where we selected the preset of um, uh, vascular carotid and we put our interrogation plane with the arrow towards the mitral valve showing the uh, inflow velocity of the mitral valve. And you can apply the same concept uh, to uh, obtaining the inflow velocity of the tricuspid valve uh, for the right ventricle, where uh, your arrow um, is indicated towards the uh, tricuspid valve in the right ventricle here. And basically, uh, this tells you um, the inflow velocity for uh, the RV. Um, where uh, the line of interrogation has been placed. We can apply also the same concept for the LV outflow track where we obtain a five chamber view at the apex and then place our cursor at the level of the LVOT in order to obtain um, a stroke distance um, at the level of the LVOT, which appears here. Here I am obtaining a parasternal short axis. In this view, we can appreciate the septal curvature as well as the function of the left ventricle. In the parasternal short axis, you can even use the M mode function in order to measure the left atrial on aorta ratio, 
which can also be done in the parasternal long axis. And you can also slide down towards the mitral valve at the tip of the leaflet in order to measure the shortening fraction, as well as end diastolic diameter and end systolic diameter. From the parasternal short axis view, you can slide towards the left shoulder just under the clavicle area and obtain the PDA view. Um, and in the PDA view, you can use some of the color presets of some of the uh, either pediatric cardiac preset or pediatric abdominal preset in order to try to appreciate flow uh, through a potential ductus arteriosus that may be pat patent in some of the newborns. Um, the ultrasound probe may allow you to assess by color uh, the presence as well as the directionality of a ductus if it is present. Here are the images obtained in the parasternal short axis view. So we can see uh, anterior, so closer to the top of the screen, the right ventricle, and then posterior is the left ventricle with the interventricular septum that seems to be quite round at the peak of systole. And as we're doing a sweep from the mitral valve to the apex, we can see the contraction of the LV um, and have a sense of also some surrounding pericardial fluid. So here you can see that I'm adjusting my uh, depth uh, and I can appreciate uh, very well the um, left ventricle contraction and the right ventricle and here the RVL flow track and pulmonary valve. Um, we can use this view in order to interrogate the M mode. So I can uh, go choose my M mode and obtain a left atrium to aorta uh, ratio. Uh, by passing through my line of interrogation through the aortic valve and the uh, left atrium. Uh, I can also use the M mode by sliding uh, towards uh, the left ventricle and obtain an M mode at the level of the um, tip of the leaflet of the mitral valve in order to calculate the shortening fraction. Um, in this view, you can also use um, the color in order to try to appreciate if there is a ductus arteriosus, but you would need to slide your probe towards uh, a bit of an upper view, um, which will be shown very shortly. So here uh, we can already appreciate the uh, pulmonary valve and the main pulmonary artery. Um, and as we're gonna be sliding uh, cranially, we can here uh, obtain a better uh, ductus arteriosus view. Now to obtain a good color, uh, you might wanna change your preset because on this preset abdominal, if you see on the top left of the screen, the filter of velocity is, are only at 18 centimeters per second, which is um, quite low and we obtain a lot of aliasing. So uh, one of the preset that could be adjusted for that is to use the actual cardiac preset And then from there, um, although the view is much more granular um, and uh, the resolution is a bit lost, uh, at least in my experience, um, we can use the color at a much higher velocity filter or Nyquist. So you can see on the top left of the screen that we're at a 64 uh, centimeters per second. And in here, we don't really appreciate the presence of any ductus arteriosus as we are sweeping um, between the pulmonary artery and uh, the aorta. Um, and so there is no evidence of a large uh, ductus arteriosus uh, in this particular view using color or even through 2D um, in this particular patient. You can also um, obtain a parasternal long axis view uh, through which you can assess the LV function as well as obtain via the M mode, the shortening fraction and some of the measurements such as the end diastolic diameter and the end systolic diameter um, of the left ventricle at the tip of the mitral valve uh, when your line of interrogation is at the tip of the mitral valve. And um, you can also sweep in order to appreciate the posterior right ventricle as well as the anterior um, RV outflow tract and pulmonary artery. Here we are obtaining a parasternal long axis view on our patient. 
where we are using the preset of pediatric abdominal and you can see that our marker for the ultrasound probe is on the right side of the screen uh, as per the cardiology con convention. And so in this view, we can appreciate uh, the left ventricle. Um, we can use the line of interrogation of the MO through the aorta to the left atrium in order to calculate the left atrial to aortic ratio. And we can also use the line of interrogation in order to obtain the M mode uh, through the tip of the mitral valve, like is currently uh, shown on the screen, in order to measure the shortening fraction, as well as to have some measurements of um, some of the end diastolic diameter or end systolic diameter of the left ventricle. And we can use this view to also do sweeps to look at the relationship with the right ventricle and the um, RV alpha track the RVOT would be anteriorly, and the tricuspid valve inflow would be posterior to this view. You can also obtain a subcostal view in order to appreciate the uh, left and right atrium and the presence of a potential interatrial shunt using color. Finally, this is an example of a subcostal view where we are increasing the depth and we are trying to appreciate the uh, two atriums as they are sitting on the liver, which is on the top of the screen. The right atrium is directly sitting on the liver and the left atrium is a bit more um, on the downside of the screen. And we can use color from the preset of uh, cardiac in order to appreciate if there is uh, an interatrial shunt. So here we will be using the pediatric cardiac preset we can reobtain the view, and then uh, by using color, uh, we can try to appreciate if there is a patent foramen ovale, if there is an atrial septal defect, and really this allows you to uh, also assess directionality of the shunt uh, if present. So here we can observe that between the two atriums, there is um, on the zoom, a zone of communication between the two uh, atriums, uh, indicative of a possible patent foramen ovale that is left to right because it's red.